Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and this video is going to be the start of a new series I'm putting together. The goal for this mission is to go from Earth to Mars, but instead of landing at Olympus like I've done in a couple of previous videos since coming back to Orbiter, I'm going to instead target one of the moons of Mars. Um, I haven't quite decided yet, probably Phobos. Unfortunately, HAL Base doesn't work with Orbiter 2016. I tried to install it and it just looks all messed up. So we're probably just going to have to pick an arbitrary place somewhere on the surface of Phobos and land there. Now I will kind of reveal some, some of my own thinking behind this mission. I was actually trying to put together a new mission where I was going to go from Earth to Jupiter and land on one of the moons of Io. But since I'm so out of practice, I found that while I was trying to record that video, I was spending so much time fumbling around uh, with Transex that I it just I didn't think it'd make for good content. Um, and as it is, you know, I tend to record everything I do, and some people have commented that I fiddle around too much. But again, I have my reasons for that, which is, you know, when I look back at my own videos later, I enjoy seeing every little thing I did so that it rem so that I so that I remember how I did those things. So another thing I'll mention is that because my eventual goal is to go to Jupiter and land on one of the moons of Jupiter, I'm using the XR5 Vanguard. And actually, let me go ahead and switch camera views here. So I'm using the XR5 Vanguard because, um, you know, fuel planning will be a lot easier, I think, with this vessel versus, you know, trying to use the XR2, which I tend to think probably can't even make that mission, I'm guessing, at least not without doing uh, fuel edits and uh, maybe dialing back the ISP or something like that. So with all that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump in and get started. I have a few more thoughts rattling around in the back of my head, but we will have time to talk about those later. The only other thing I want to say is that for this particular mission, I'm, I did a little bit of a shortcut. Since I already found a good date for Mars in previous videos, I'm using that date so that I don't have to sit here in Transex and, you know, fiddle around and try to find a good launch date. So this date that I have up here, October 29th, 2026, I found in a, you know, previous mission that that seemed like a good time to go. So that's what I picked. So we're, but I haven't set up Transex yet, so we're going to have to go through all of that. So escape, forward, and we're going to pick Mars. Uh, forward on that side to create the third stage, although we don't really need it just yet. I'm going to go back on that side, and while I have stage one up over here, I'm going to view over to escape plan, and I'm going to set my PE distance just while I'm thinking about it. So I'm going to enter in uh, 6571, and uh, technically it's 0.01, I think, to get a perfect uh, 200 kilometer altitude target. So we have that set up there. Now I'm going to go forward on this side and we're going to put in a prograde our prograde velocity to go out to mars and i don't i shouldn't need to adjust the date at least not by much um, because again this date that i'm using here 61342 should have us arriving at mars at i uh, forget what the date was but it was pretty close to here so i'm just going to add in some prograde Oops, I went the wrong, no, yeah. Add in our prograde, and we should see that once this hypothetical gets out to the orbit of Mars, it should line up right on the node, right on the, uh, so let me just keep adding in outward, or uh, not outward, but prograde. And yeah, there we are. So let's look at our encounter on this side. So currently we're not seeing it. So let me keep an eye on the closest approach here. Maybe that I overshot it. So let's just add in more. Yeah, I think I must have overshot it. So let's back off. Um, let's see here. So we're getting down to a low point here around 740 something and I'm not hitting it. So let me just dial the date around a little bit. I shouldn't have to change it by much because all the date stuff was already figured out previously. So it looks like if I go forward with the date, I'm bringing down the closest approach significantly. And that's Mars over there, so let's just keep doing that. Now I will say, as part of my planning here on Earth, um, I suppose ideally 
boy, I do wish I do wish I remembered what that date was. I think that seems right to me. So I'm going to go back to uh, prograde here and just add in some more prograde. Because the closer I can be to that white line when I arrive, I think the better off I'll be overall. Um, now, what I started to say before was that I, now I, I, I suppose ideally, like while I'm sitting here at Earth, I would figure out, you know, everything I need to know about this mission. I would figure out, you know, how to arrive at Mars so that I'm in plane with Phobos or Deimos if I choose Deimos. But I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> I'm not... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm not going to try to figure those things out just yet. Um, so, so our planning isn't going to be, you know, the best. Uh, but I, it seems to me like when I've done this previously, I kind of did the same thing. It's like I'm just going to go aim for the planet, and then when I get a good long way out away from Earth, then I can start adjusting my plan a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do here. Not as realistic as it would be, you know, if uh, actual space engineers were planning this mission, but but I'm not an actual space engineer. <laughs> so now I suppose we should pay close attention to our inclination there because most likely um, the moons of mars orbit in a normal inclination because this has this has us on a retrograde inclination arriving at mars not that it matters so much at this point because so much of this is going to change between now and our arrival but let's just take a look so we can at least think about it so we'll reference mars <clears throat> i'm a bit dehydrated i went on a bike ride this morning and it's um and we're going to target phobos and the inclination of Phobos around Mars is uh, one degree, so yeah, it's very uh, it's it's very equatorial. So we'll, we'll want to arrive with a well, we want to plan to arrive with an inclination that's close to zero. <clears throat> um, but yeah, what I was saying is I I went on a bike ride this morning as I have been doing a lot over the last several months, and you know it's June. In Florida so it's really hot here <laughs> and I was I drank over three liters of water on my ride and I'm still super thirsty all right so I'm just gonna try to tinker around just a little bit with the date just to make sure that our inclination is coming out the other side uh, again it's not super critical at this point so there it's wrapping around and there we basically have it and this shows us with an inclination of 43 which is quite steep but I just, I'm just, I just, I don't think it matters right now. I just, I feel like the inaccuracies of these MFDs um, is such that we don't have to worry about those kinds of details as long as we're in the ballpark at this point. Because once we get into up, up into orbit, we're going to set up a whole new plan anyway. So I think we're just going to take this. It's good enough. So 61343 is our launch date, but I. Okay, that works because that's tomorrow. Six one three four two six one three four three, that works. So this is the plan we're going to go with. Um, one thing, um, I probably don't have to worry about fuel with the Vanguard. Uh, let me check how much Delta V burn time says we have. Although we're on a body right now, so ten kilometers. That's more than the XR two had, so we should have zero problems with this mission. But locks will be an issue, I imagine. Yeah, it says we have 14 days. So our time of flight is 285 days, so we need at least that much. Uh, but I'm not going to be stingy on the locks. So let's just go to the payload editor. And again, there's a whole thing you can do where you can have... Uh, I think this was mainly for Wide Awake where you can have a whole simulation where the vessel pulls up into a hangar and cranes come down but I'm not going <laughs> to I don't I'm not going to mess with all that. I don't even know how you would do it with this version of Orbiter. And we're just going to open the payload editor. We're going to go to uh, locks. 
and we're just going to put uh, let's put put it in one and then we can do control down down and that gives us 314 days which I think is yeah 285 is what we need so two 314 although we will be going to Phobos and you know what we might do I didn't even think about this just now but maybe we'll come back maybe when we land on Phobos that'll complete the mission we'll hang out for a while and then maybe we'll come back so if we're going to do that, we might be there for a while. So let's take, you know, again, let's not be stingy. Um, so that gives us, uh, what is that? You know, a couple years, uh, well, multiple years. Three, you know, it's, I don't know, that's like four or five years at least. Five times three is 15. So I'd say that's probably, probably around five years. Let's take extra just in case. And if, the, if we are actually thinking about coming back, uh, maybe we'll need some fuel, so let's uh, take some fuel with us. Now, there would be a logical way to plan how to put these inside of the vessel. Because as we burn off locks, we want to be able to eject those modules so that we can lower our DV. Let me actually take a quick look at the payload area. I wasn't planning on doing this, but now that... It I'm into it. I'm thinking about these things. So let's open the doors. We'll time warp forward to get through that. And turn off the APU. We'll refuel all that stuff when we're about ready to go. But my point is, so if we look at how these modules are put in, if I end up stacking something on top of these, then that means we won't be able to eject the thing below it. But right now it looks like we still have plenty of room down here to include some fuel. And without getting into fuel planning and all that, I'm just going to start including extra fuel modules all the way across the bottom. I don't even know how much that is. But as we burn off, uh, as we empty these fuel tanks, <clears throat> we'll be able to eject those. And as we burn, as we um, use up our locks, we'll be able to eject those. So I don't have, like, if I put the locks on top of the fuel and we use up the fuel first, it wouldn't be terribly realistic or convenient to eject the the module on bottom so I think you get the idea there so that's going to be our loadout uh, and obviously I didn't plan anything there so this loadout might not make any sense at all probably doesn't but we're gonna close that up and turn off the APU go back down here and let's uh, continue or let's finish setting up our transex plan because I do know that the launch time is soon. So we'll view, uh, we'll go. So now that we've got transex configured, oh, the other thing I want to see, yeah, I've noticed that it's odd to me that when I add in more fuel, my total DV goes down, but I'm thinking maybe that's because, I mean, for one thing, I added locks, which is going to lower my DV, but I'm wondering if if a burn time calculator is including that extra fuel in this calculation I'm thinking it must not be so back to transex we'll go back on this side and we'll go back on this side and we're just going to I think the last thing I need to set up is just my eject orientation so as before a uh, white line needs to be over the green line that's the bottom line and and there's two ways we can do that and I see this uh, the way the way this hypothetical line's coming around Earth, I don't like it. So I'm gonna view over to setup, change my graph projection to maneuver or plan rather, and then view back over to the escape plan. And we're gonna set this eject orientation so that it's uh, so the white line is directly over the green line. And then we're gonna check our heading. So this heading has us going straight south, not ideal. Um, but if we or it's almost straight south, but if if we flip it around the other way, it's going to be you know 180 degrees opposite, so it's going to be almost north. Uh, luckily, we still have a way. We still have a day before we have to take off, so we're just going to sit here on the runway and let Earth rotate. So with all of our stuff shut off, let's make sure we have external cooling turned on. I don't think I ever did that. So let's do that. And again, right before we take off we'll go ahead and top up all our resources just to make sure uh, so now that we have external cooling turned on everything else off we're just gonna let the earth rotate 
so that we can get a better a better heading on our takeoff and if for any reason I miss my launch date I'm not worried about it so my eject date is 343.2 yeah if for any reason I miss that I think this plans flexible enough that um, you know we can we can take off a bit later than that okay so that heading there would be terrible because that's 259 which is almost straight west so that's actually good news though because that means if I flip it around the other way it's gonna be almost straight east which is what we want as much as possible we want an easterly heading and there we are so and it's still going up right let me just warp time forward yeah it's still going up so that means we're getting closer to 90 so let's just uh, let time pass Let's not be too aggressive on our time warp though because we might overshoot if we do overshoot for any reason we can use the scenario to rewind time a little scenario editor to back up time a little bit but we would prefer to just get it right the first time preferably and we're getting really close to that point just uh, three degrees off right now would be perfectly acceptable time to take off but we'll go ahead and warp time forward just a little bit farther and bring down our adjustment to a finer setting and okay so we're, we're really close to 90 so I'm uh, coming up on 20 minutes on this video so what I'm going to do I'm gonna control s to do a quick save I do have transx loaded so transx will get saved into the scenario file and then I'm going to press uh, my camera switch here I meant to pause the simulator so I'm gonna pause the simulator right there so we're ready to go so when we come back in part two we're going to take off get into orbit and that might be a little interesting because I am in the Vanguard and it's I, I remember from previous flights from years back the Vanguard feels like a tank compared to the XR2 you know the XR2 has you know it's it's so it's comparably it's so lightweight that it feels like you know like flying a motorcycle or something you know it just has a ton of pickup and a ton of agility and the XR5 by comparison is you know like trying to fly a tank <laughs> so that's going to be it for part one if you did like the video leave a comment down below and i'll see you in the next part